Earlier we would remember everything by memory but now we don't. Because science is doing it for us. Earlier we could calculate numbers mentally. Even today our grandparents' generation does not use calculators we use it even for a simple calculation our next generation doesn't even know how it is done. We started depending so much on science that we are not using our power. If you don't use a power then you will lose it. We have a particular facility in front of us. Let's continue to use our power. Shouldn't we be doing it? For everything if we start looking for external assistance, then inner power will automatically get depleted. We write down everything for us as reminders why not remember all the meetings we have throughout the day? Why should we write down everything? When all these gadgets did not exist, how did people remember? They would remember by memory and therefore their mind power would increase. Today we put down everything into a scheduler for us to remind us. And then we seek input from Google about what we need to do. This is not going to be healthy for the soul. We need to repeat to ourselves that it is somebody else's business and that is altering my destiny. Use your power because that is the only power which is not dependent on the state of the world. From today we will practice for a week when the phone rings, don't immediately check who has called. First take a guess. Catch the vibration. Who has called me? Even if you go wrong 8 out of 10 times, you will be right twice. When you get it right 2 times, it means you have started to increase your catching power. Similarly when the doorbell rings, don't rush to see who it is. Catch the vibration of the person standing outside. Use the power of your mind to to know who is at the door. Just ask your mind who it is and it will immediately tune to their frequency. Instead we say to the mind, go and check who is at the door. So the mind will just go and do it. It will follow all our instructions. We have started saying our mind is not in our control. Actually it is only my mind which is under my control. No other entity is under my control. Shall we do this? It makes life interesting. The next step is if you want to tell something to a person and it is not really a crisis then do not call them up on the phone just sit down. Create the message as a thought and radiate to them do you think it will reach there? Send it means you just create the thought for that person. The thought will travel automatically by itself to that person. Sending it means you are focusing on that person. It will go to them. Can you do it? You are going to enjoy this life. It is a lot more interesting than typing or making phone calls. Even at home if you want to say something to your family don't say it verbally. First say it through your thoughts. Do people catch your vibrations? Yes. Then let us use it. The more we use this power, the more powerful our mind becomes. When the mind becomes more powerful, its resilience will also increase. We have something powerful but we are not using it. So what happens if it is lying unused? It often happens that we buy new clothes and new pair of shoes. But we just keep them unused. When someone asks us to use them, we say we have preserved them for special occasions. And while we wait for the special occasion, those things would have worn out or look old. And then we realize we have not used them at all. 
Mind is not an entity which will suddenly come of good use one day, after you have not used it the right way for years. Be used properly on a daily basis if you are facing any difficulties because of someone you don't need to repeatedly talk to that person to clarify your stance. Experiment that whatever you want to convey to that person, use very high vibrational words and not with critical or judgment thinking you start sending them thoughts. When we speak verbally, they listen through their ears these days we explain ourselves so much to the other person and yet we say there is a misunderstanding we ask. I explain so much but still how could you not understand? This happens because we are communicating with our mouth and ears our mind is cluttered. When the mind is cluttered, we can hear whatever is spoken but we do not understand it. When you are communicating with your mind or thoughts where are you directly hitting at? The other person's mind. You might know because it is in India's culture. The yogi or tapasvis had so much power in them that they would just speak a word and it would immediately manifest into reality whether they gave a blessing or a curse, it would instantly become reality. What was it signifying? The power of their mind. Does it mean their mind was different from our mind? No we all have the same mind. The only difference is that they were using the power of the mind when they kept using its power it started becoming so powerful that the thought or word they created became reality. And for that we don't need to leave our house and move into a far away jungle. We don't need to say, they were away from everyone in a jungle. Where can we go? We just need to use our mind while we are living here. You just start using it a little bit with a little meditation you start cleaning and purifying the little bit when you eliminate those clouds and walls that we spoke about it will not take very long but within a few months or even sooner than that. You will experience I created this thought and it manifested into reality. How many of you have experienced it? Simple. We just need to increase this experience. Gradually you will reach a stage where you will think only of the things you want manifesting in reality other than that you will not create a single waste thought. People will start fearing you and say, you don't speak like that. Because whatever you say will become reality. Because it is the power of the mind. If we give a blessing then that blessing will manifest if we speak negative, that will also manifest. This means along with power we also have responsibility. When you create that power spiritually with the power of meditation you will not create a single negative word for anyone. Do you want to have such power that uses something about a person and it becomes reality for them? You don't want the power or do you feel you cannot becomes of powerful? Please remember that those yogis and saints were not different from any of us. The only differences that did not have the power of science in those times. So they were dependent only on the power of mind. In our case we have so many things to be dependent on that we ignored the power of mind, and became dependent on those objects. But as soon as we start using the power of our mind in fact this is a power which increases very quickly. It is like your physical health supposing the body is a little weak we hire a trainer and exercise at the gym every day within a few months our body will completely change because there we will work on every single muscle. And then we will work on lifting weights on the first day we cannot even lift a lower weight. 
But what we did is to go there every day and work out. It requires only two things, consistency and self-discipline. Like wise even our phone notification. If we turn it off today, it should remain off forever. It should not be that after a few days someone says, I messaged you but you did not even read and respond to it. And immediately decide to turn it on because we fear that otherwise people will get angry. Tell them clearly, I do not keep notifications on and check my phone every other minute. If there is anything urgent you please call me. When we are doing the right karma we don't need to feel scared about other people's opinions. People are living with such a fluctuating state of mind that they will magnify even the most trivial situation. They will say, I messaged you. You did not even see. What is this? I was waiting for your response. Tell them to relax. We don't need to magnify trivial situations, it's all about energy. And we feel it is a crisis. There is no crisis. Don't make everything a crisis because otherwise the mind and body will respond as if there is a crisis it is like suppose we just narrowly escape an accident which was imminent. It could be a 30 seconds experience where we were about to crash into something but we did not. Do you see what happens? But the mind and body will react during those 30 seconds. But actually this is how we are living our life when we start magnifying every issue. When the phone rings we run towards it, as though something big is going to happen otherwise. Do it with ease. It doesn't mean you do it slowly it only means do it with ease. Don't hurry your mind all the time otherwise even when you're sitting doing nothing, your mind will experience an of he will upheaval. That is overthinking. People say the mind just does not remain quiet. There is a constant inner chatter because we did not teach our mind how to remain silent. For everything we instructed the mind to hurry up or run. So it started speeding up. So now our mind runs fast even during the night. Therefore we say we cannot sleep. One thing is very interesting. Get good sleep at night. Please come to our meditation center. We are not calling you there to sleep we will only tell you that we will sit for 5 minutes in meditation. And you will see that the person cannot remain away given for 30 seconds. Just a few days ago I was at a retreat center. After every hour there is a music that plays for one minute for the traffic control of our thoughts. There was a brother who told us after one minute I had to stop myself from not falling of to sleep. But I still fell of to sleep all this happened in just one minute traffic control meditation. And he said, I take sleeping pills every day. Why? When the noise in the mind doesn't shut down, we need to consume substance to fall asleep. Because for us to sleep, the mind needs to become more and more silent it is like a vehicle which is in the fifth gear, remains in the fifth gear throughout the day. It is never brought to neutral, so how can it break suddenly at night? This is why we don't get sleep. We have also spoiled our lifestyle which means we do not sleep at the same time every night we don't say this is my time to sleep we say. I will sleep once my work gets over. Even for our meals we say, I will eat it once my work get over. To come for meditation also we say, I will come once my work get over. Then what is our number one priority in life? 
we never miss our work. Whatever we make our priority, we pay attention to it. The time to eat and the time to sleep the time with family and the time with the self-priority needs to go the other way around we need to be firm. This is my time. I am not doing anything else now unless there is a major crisis. A few days ago I met someone who is an administrator of a state seeing that he came from work at 9 p.m. I asked him why he got so late he replied that he works from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. I said, but you are looking so fresh even now. He replied, every morning I keep two hours just for myself nobody can reach me during those two hours in the morning. Setting aside two hours is a very big thing he said. After those two hours, you can get me to do any amount of work throughout the day. It is like the phone. You charge it for 30 minutes and thereafter you can use any of its features throughout the day but if we say, I don't have the time to charge my phone because I need it even at that time to work then that work takes a toll on our mind and body so consistency and discipline if you decide to sleep at a particular time. Then that is going to be the time you go to bed if you decide to wake up at a particular time then that is going to be the time you wake up don't give an excuse that it is a Sunday. So what if it is a Sunday? Some people say, don't wake me early, tomorrow is a Sunday. It should be the opposite, that we wake up earlier on Sundays and do the things we could not do during the week. This body is not designed to work like a machine which you can turn on or off at any time. It is designed for discipline. To bring about any newness in life we need self-control and discipline. Self-discipline and self-control will increase the power of the mind.